influencers, if there could be like one lesson for people that are trying to sort of take their, their brand, their influencer brand into the, the next, um, I guess, you know, in, to the future of marketing, it would be to, mm -hmm. to truly build out and be authentic with your community. Um, that's, that's really the only way to win. And I really that, think actually, it is. Yeah. I, I really think it is. Like, Cause I think three things, you know, building a brand, the three things it comes down to is content, community, and collaboration. Collaboration is something some people can do, some people can. It depends where you are. If you're in LA, um, you're probably going to be able to find other influencers to collaborate with, do videos with, take photos with, write articles with, whatever. If you're in, I don't know, Missouri or whatever, like or St. Yeah. Louis, it might be a little more difficult compared to LA to be able to find those people. Content is something that can differentiate you as well. But the way that we're, you know, we're inundated again with like so many pieces of content every single day, you know, as a consumer, we're, we're bombarded with sponsored posts on top of sponsored posts. It's really hard these days to stick out unless you're Mr. Beast and you're able to put $500,000 into a video doing a crazy stunt that nobody's ever done before. That's <laughs> yeah. a really hard way to differentiate yourself as well. So I do think that the golden egg then is community. I think the way to be able to differentiate yourself is to have a very strong focus to who are my top fans? How do I mobilize them, activate them and make them feel valued for their loyalty? That's what I think like building a brand, community building, and even true fan really comes down to. Now, do you have, um, cause I would love to, I would love to understand like some of like case studies a true fan has worked on that have mm -hmm. shown measurable success. Can you speak to, some things like that that could really drive the point home for people that totally. first of all are are they may not be comfortable with influencer marketing yet or if they are they don't understand um or have ever been ex have any experience with doubling down on marketing to like their own following yes yeah, so i'll give you some examples some of these examples were were also examples of how customers in the last three or four years were using social rank the platform that we bought out in november um so you know the first is the red cross about two three years ago the red cross used our platform um, to be able to find volunteers that could come out and help them with their initiatives. They, they went online, um, they found people that were using the hashtag or were mentioning the Red Cross in posts, and they were reaching out to those people and asking them to join their volunteer base. The second example, um, this is a current client of ours, is Netflix. Netflix is currently using our platform, not even for marketing, but just to make strategic business decisions by understanding, all right, or what, what is the main audience that is watching Orange is the New Black? What is the main audience that's watching Stranger Things? And let's understand what sort of programming we can put out next that might be able to either cater to these audiences or cater to an entirely different audience that we haven't tapped into. Um, and this is very vital, especially because of the fact that platforms like Netflix are also trying to cater to an international audience now. They're trying to build original programming, not just in North America, but in other places like India where the entire cultural paradigm is very different in those countries. Um, the third example I'd bring up is United Talent Agency, still an existing customer. Um, and, and they use it for being able to find brand affinity between their talent and brands that they're trying to work with. So one of their key talent is Chris Pratt. Um, if Chris Pratt tomorrow wanted to work with a watch brand, they could come onto our platform, they could run Hublot watches, they could run Chris Pratt's account, find the brand overlap very easily, and see, all right, is there a big overlap? If there's a big overlap, then let's go to Hublot and tell them that this is a seamless partnership. If there isn't a big overlap, that still could be spun in a good way because we could go to Hublot and say, hey, do you want to reach out to an audience that genuinely doesn't follow Hublot right now? So it's kind of a win-win for them. If there's a big yeah. similarity, even if there isn't a big similarity, they can spin it using data in a way that can make that deal happen a lot quicker. I like that a lot. Um, it makes a lot of sense, um, and and I understand what you're doing. I wanted to, I wanted to sort of tee this up um, with a couple like insight questions through your experience. But before I I get into that, um, I just wanted to open the floor for anything in terms of like future of marketing or what True Fans doing. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to? No, to talk about? no. I, I think I, honestly, I'm very impressed with myself. Normally, I'm not very good at describing uh, what we do at that level. But uh, I'm pretty happy. No, it was, it, myself, so appreciate it. <laughs> no, my pleasure. It was really good. It makes a ton of sense, and uh, and I've never I've never heard of a tech that does what TrueFan does. And I don't like to um, be so evangelistic about products or, or specific companies on the podcast. But I think it's very relevant because it's it's so different from everything else that I've seen out there. Like there's a lot of influencer marketing firms, agencies, but not at this level. 
like really in all seriousness, like that do what you do. So it's very cool to hear like how companies are actually using it. Um, You've been a six six time. Well, is it six time entrepreneur? Or is it more? You've done a six. six? six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But again, as I said at the very beginning, um, some of those did not work out. Um, but very happy with the work that I've done in the last three years with um, a wearables company, being able yeah. to build Dunk with uh, my roommate in New York who had started the account in 2013, and then now with Truthin. So, so my question to you is. Um, Sometimes I ask the question, like, would you do it again? But you've done it six times. So that's a stupid question to ask. So, <laughs> but I would <laughs> well, ask. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, what's uh, what's the next venture? Give it like another year or two. Uh, but uh, so I'll ask another question. Um, and this is a very vanilla question, but I like asking it because it, everyone interprets a question differently and they really lay into it. So it's good. It gives some good insight for people that are sort of younger in their career. Um, one lesson that you would tell yourself, younger self, um, a professional lesson. Uh, that would help you get to where you are a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, so are you looking for like my main? Yeah, like, let's do it. Piece of advice. Yeah, some advice. Yeah. Some some advice you tell your younger self. Yeah, I think. The, I mean, if I was looking back at like the eighteen year old Swish. Um, yeah, I know you're not old, so it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> four years ago. I, I would yeah. I would I would tell him first of all, don't don't sweat the small stuff. Um, I think this is something that my brother told me and his words have still kind of rung a bell in my ear because a lot of times I think I freak out by being like, oh my God, there's so much to do um, and I need to do this quickly. And like, you feel like you're in a race with not only yourself, maybe your friends, maybe society, maybe what people are telling you to do. Just don't sweat the small stuff. You know, I think every single person is on their own path. Um, every single person hopefully will find success at their own given time. Don't rush that process. Enjoy that process and take away as much as you can from it. Um, I think number two is um, I, another the piece of, uh, of advice that my brother gave me is don't eat the marshmallow. Um, and what that means is there are going to be a lot of distractions that come up. And, and this is something that I faced two years ago. It's something I faced last year, something I even face right now. But I think I've become better now at putting the distractions aside and really trying to focus in. Um, so when you get to a certain level, when you start making moves, um, you're always going to have opportunities around you that you can capitalize upon. So it's worth noting that there's always a time to say no. There's always a time to say yes. And being able to prioritize the current projects you're working on, especially if you really believe in them, is a skill that you will need to develop. And then the third and final thing is an advice that I think has very much affected my life, which is your net worth is your net worth. Um, focus as much of your time, not just on building your business, but on trying to build up a strong network. Um, the most organic way, in my opinion, of doing that is by interviewing people. So if you want to start a podcast, record it even on GarageBand and export SoundCloud, do it in the most scrappy way if need be. You don't need to go out and buy $200 mics right off the bat. If you want to write articles, go on to Medium, go on to LinkedIn and find time to interview other people. I think 99% of people love talking about themselves. I am exhibit A. It is yeah. far easier, I think, to be able to reach out to someone and get them to say yes to an interview than get them to say yes to a coffee. So instead of taking time away from someone, I think it's always great being able to create the foundation of a relationship upon you giving value to them by interviewing them. So that's definitely something I would do if I was looking to grow my network is interview people, Follow up with people, make sure you value your network, make sure you're not just trying to reach the next person, next person, the next person. Um, invest time in really caring for your network. I love it. Those are all, those are all very good takeaways. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Those are, I like that. Yeah, yeah, there was no limit on the amount of advice, so I, I, I'm glad you went into all those. 